Previously, we were able to use the electron bin theory of solids to help explain the behavior of conductors and insulators. Now we're going to apply the electron bin theory to help explain the behavior and properties of a group of solids known as semiconductors or semiconductors. So basically, semiconductors are a group of solids that are able to conduct electricity but conduct electricity not as well as our conductors. So let's begin by recalling what our electron band theory tells us about solids known as insulators. These are materials that cannot readily conduct electricity very well. So basically inside any insulator the valence band is completely filled with our electrons. So all the energy quantum states within the valence band, which is the highest possible electron band of our solid, is completely filled. And that means in order for our electron to go to our next unoccupied energy quantum state in the conduction band region, it has to gain a certain quantity of energy. But because this separation of energy between the valence band and our conduction band is so high because the energy band gap is so high our electrons cannot actually transition into our conduction band to actually create an electric current and that's exactly why insulators do not readily conduct electricity very well. Now the diagram that describes what is taking place within a semiconductor is somewhat similar to our insulator case but the very important difference lies in this separation energy given by the energy gap or our electron band energy gap. So basically for the case of semiconductors the valence band is also completely filled. So all our energy quantum states within this band is filled. And because our energy difference between our valence band and the conduction band for the semiconductor is very small, when we apply an electric potential difference to our semiconductor, some of those electrons found on the top of this valence band can in fact gain enough of energy to escape and transition into the conduction band and then when they move within the conduction band that will create an electric current. So unlike insulators, unlike insulators in which the energy gap is very high inside semiconductors, the energy gap is very small and so that means electrons can in fact gain enough energy to escape and transition into the conduction band thereby creating an electric current and conducting electricity. So, once again, in semiconductors, the electron band diagram is similar to the diagram inside insulators. The, different li the difference lies in the separation difference between the valence band and the conduction band. This separation distance known as the energy gap. Now, by the way, these y-axis are our energy axes. So, as we go higher along the x-axis, the energy increases. Now in insulators, since the energy gap is so great, about 5 to 10 electron volts, no electrons can gain enough energy to actually transition into the unoccupied quantum state region that is known as the conduction band. However, since the energy gap in the semiconductors is so much smaller, it's about 1 electron volt depending on the time type of object we're looking, since electrons can now move into that conduction band, that will create an electric current and semiconductors do in fact conduct electricity. So basically, the relatively small energy gap between the valence band and our conduction band allows some of these electrons at the top of the, val of the valence band to actually transition and jump into our conduction band region and this creates an electric current. 
Now, another important idea must be discussed when discussing semiconductors. So notice when these electrons jump from the valence band to our conduction band, they leave unoccupied energy quantum states in our valence band. And these are generally known as holes. So as the electrons in the valence band transition to the conduction band, they create unoccupied quantum states that are known as holes. Now these holes or unoccupied quantum states are quickly filled or occupied by nearby electrons found in slightly lower energy quantum states. So the electrons found right below these holes, these unoccupied quantum states in the valence band region can be filled. So these electrons lower in energy can transition thereby creating more holes right below them. So this process basically continues and so these holes basically move down toward the negative electrode. So, let's examine the following diagram. So basically, these electrons correspond to this valence band. So when we apply our electric potential difference to our semiconductor, we create a positive end and a negative end. And as a result of this voltage difference, some of these electrons at the top of our valence band will jump to our conduction band. And when this takes place, an end or an unoccupied quantum state is created known as the hole. So this corresponds to our hole. Now when this takes place, our electron right below this, uh, uh, this uh, hole basically could gain enough energy to jump to this hole. And that creates another hole. And this process continues. And so we can imagine that these holes that are created basically move downward to the negative end. So the electrons move to the positive end, these holes move to the negative end. So once again, when we apply a voltage difference to our semiconductor, these holes migrate from the positive to the negative end. And as these electrons move, as these holes move, that basically creates an electric current.